And there's things you can do, and this was my other real motivation for being out there, was there are things you can do to stay out of the hospital. And at the time when I got sick, we were having a real problem in Southern California with overburdening the hospitals. And I thought, my God, there's so many things to do, but we're not educating people how to handle this illness. I want you to take us back to the beginning. When did you first get diagnosed? Christmas Eve, uh, fitful night. I wake up in the morning, my wife goes, wait a minute, touches me and she goes, "Uh uh-oh, takes the temperature, 102. And she'd been with me all night, mind you, did not get the illness. The next day I took a COVID test, negative. I think I took another test that same day, negative. Now I'm three days into this illness, lying in bed with high fevers. And I'm lying there thinking, oh my God, if this isn't COVID, it's acute lymphocytic leukemia. And I'm, I've started preparing myself for a bone marrow biopsy in the morning, and maybe it's AML. I was really upset all night long. Next morning, took a test, positive COVID. And that actually was a relief. And to be clear, you were in close proximity with your family, both your wife and, you, and your son. How did they do? Uh, my wife, in spite, in spite of staying with me the entire night that the fever broke out, did she never got it. One of my sons got it, and he was the one that was sliding my eggs under the door in the morning. And every time he would come, i go, oh, don't don't do it. He got it. He was febrile for three days. He's 28 years old. He had a flu. He got completely over it with no symptoms. And he was actually frustrated he had quarantined so diligently because it was such a mild illness for him. But for him, but the thing about it is you never know who's going to. You never know. You never know. You never know, and you never know who you're going to give it to. So, Dr. Drew, tell us. What additional symptoms did you have when you first came on to the illness? So I got the flu syndrome to begin with, I had fever and chills and all that good stuff, severe back pain. That was, that was sort of a striking feature of it. Got some cough, some shortness of breath. I said I was, you know, my oxygen saturation hung in between 94, went down to 92 at one point, maybe, you know, hanging around 94 mostly. Some, some shortness of breath, some chest discomfort. But it felt like the flu. In fact, in fact, I'd had H1N1 10 years ago, and I thought to myself, well, H1N1, I was more toxic. I was even worse. But the next phase of this illness is the really nefarious part. So as the flu sort of settled, then the inflammatory, what sometimes we call the cytokine activation piece of, the right. sin- of this illness, kicked in. I started getting a lot of cough, a lot of shortness of breath, ex- tremendous neurological symptoms. I was uh, what my wife described as dazed. I was just, uh, I really was out of it. I had a very interesting experience where I couldn't follow sequences. My wife would say, come in, I'm going to give you some water. I want you to put some powder in the water. Then we're going to get you some lunch. I, I just go, I, I know you're saying something. I can't, I can't hear, I can't process it. I don't know what you're telling me. To this moment, the most persistent disturbing symptoms are, I, I'm a little hyper expanded. I have some air trapping, we call that. Like there's like my airways aren't acting normally. I'm short of breath easily. And boy, the neurological stuff still there. I've got terrible ringing in my ear, which started on day three, and I have word finding difficulty and I am fatigued, but every day a little better. And and believe me, I'm grateful for the wellness I've got because it could have been a lot worse. Well, you documented when you hit that inflammation part of the disease. So let's take a look. This is the thing about this thing. There is a flu phase for about three to five days. I attacked it very aggressively, did the Zelenko protocols, and it seemed to help me. And then it kicked into this inflammatory phase, which is the part we all worry about. So headaches, trouble concentrating, and I can't sequence things, and it's just weird. And then the lungs be, feel tight, full, hyperexpanded, that kind of thing. So I'm getting a amlanivimab infusion. There's my IV site. This is an attempt to push my immune system along, or at least push the virus further out of my system. Ooh, I'm getting ringing in my ears. Uh, nurse ringing in my ears. Guys, I'm gonna end this. I'm starting to get, you know, symptoms. I gotta be monitored. 